Hello everyone. In my previous video, we talked about the wave theory that is electromagnetic radiations and electromagnetic wave theory. There we discussed that electromagnetic wave theory was not able to completely explain black body radiation and the photoelectric effect. So let us now discuss in detail what actually the black body radiation is and the photoelectric effect. So let's talk about first of all black body radiation. So what is a black body? A perfect absorber and a perfect emitter of radiations which means that it emits and absorbs radiations of all frequencies which fall on its surface. A black body is a body that absorbs all the radiations incident on it, irrespective of the frequency or the angle. According to the law of thermodynamics, a body always tries to stay in thermal equilibrium. So to stay in thermal equilibrium, a black body must emit all the radiations at the same rate as it absorbs and so it must also be a good emitter of radiation emitting electromagnetic waves of as many frequencies as it can absorb. For example, when we heat an iron ball like object, then on heating, first of all it becomes red, then it becomes orange, then becomes yellow and at very high temperature they become white, means the color is changing. The color changes from red, red to orange, orange to yellow, yellow to white and at very high temperature it becomes blue. So now these observations are not in agreement with the wave theory of radiations. Because according to the electromagnetic theory, energy is emitted or absorbed continuously. So, the radiations emitted may vary in intensity but should have same color. That means, the red color intensity may vary but the color should remain red. So, the change in color shows that wavelength is changing. This means non-continuous flow of energy. So, it could not be explained by EM theory. So, this phenomenon shows that if we keep on heating the light that it emits, it will show the change in wavelength. That means the wavelength keeps on decreasing. But after wide, there is no further change. Look at the graph. Here in this graph, the scattered light we have and the wavelength. So the graph is in the form of a bell shaped graph and the intensity, this is the intensity of the radiations versus the wavelength graph. Now uh, with the increase in the wavelength, the intensity of the radiation is increasing, then it becomes maximum Then further it starts decreasing. However, as the temperature changes, means as the temperature increases, intensity of the radiation also increases. Next is photoelectric effect. Now Hertz in 1887 discovered that when a beam of light of certain frequency strike at the metal surface then electrons are knocked out. This phenomenon is called photoelectric effect. So the phenomenon of ejection of electrons from the surface of metal when light of suitable frequency strikes on it is called photoelectric effect and the electrons which are knocked out are called photoelectrons. Now apparatus set to demonstrate this effect is given below. Now in that apparatus it consists of a tube having two electrodes those two electrodes are cathode which is negative, anode which is positive. Now on the plate of the cathode light of suitable frequency will allow to fall. The two electrodes are connected with the battery. So when the light will fall electrons will be knocked out that will be detected by the detector that is the emitted electrons will travel towards the anode 
as which detects them so these electrons are called photoelectrons so what are the experimental results of photoelectric effect number 1 when beam of light falls on a metal surface electrons are ejected immediately number 2 number of electrons ejected is proportional to intensity or the brightness of the light number 3 threshold frequency for each metal there is a characteristic minimum frequency below which the effect is not observed this is called threshold frequency if frequency of light is less than the threshold frequency no ejection of electrons take place no matter how long it falls on surface and how it, how high it is in its intensity so what is w not the minimum energy required to eject electrons is called photoelectric work function or w not and the energy of the ejected electrons it can be represented by the equation but this equation is in accordance with the planck's equation so h nu minus nu not is equal to half mv square was not explained by the electromagnetic wave theory but it was explained by the planck's quantum theory look at the graph in this graph we have the kinetic energy of photoelectrons versus frequency now as the uh, frequency of radiation is increasing means light frequency is increasing then the kinetic energy of electrons is also increasing but the graph is not starting from the zero point it starts a bit away from the zero point this was not explained by electromagnetic wave theory but it was explained by planck's quantum theory so let us now discuss the planck's quantum theory so let's talk about planck's quantum theory actually this theory was put forward by max planck in 1900 and it regard it was further elaborated by einstein in 1905 the main points of this theory are number 1 the radiant energy is emitted or absorbed discontinuously means in the form of small packets of energy those small packets of energy are called quanta whereas in case of light they are called photons number 2 the energy of each quantum is directly proportional to the frequency of the radiation that is e is proportional to nu or e equals to h nu where h is planck's constant whose value is always fixed value is 6.626 ten raised to the power minus 34 joules second number 3 energy is always emitted or absorbed as integral multiple of quantum that is e is always equal to n h nu where n is always an integral means it's a integer it cannot be in friction it can be 1 2 3 4 it's always a whole number value next is the explanation of black body radiations and the photoelectric effect on the basis of quantum theory so let us talk about first the uh, photoelectric effect on the basis of quantum theory now we have already discussed that what is photoelectric effect simply the ejection of the electrons from the surface of metal under the influence of striking photons is called photoelectric effect put forward by hertz in 1887 now for the ejection of electrons minimum frequency is required and that minimum frequency is called threshold frequency let us say like that falls has energy equal to h nu out of this energy h nu not is used as the binding energy and the rest energy rest of the energy is given to the electrons as a gift 
in the form of kinetic energy so following observations were made if frequency is greater than threshold frequency then ejection occurs and kinetic energy is imparted to the ejected electron if frequency is equal to the threshold frequency means if nu is equal to nu not then only ejection occurs number 3 if frequency is less than threshold frequency means if nu is greater than nu not nu is greater than nu not what is nu so let us talk about photoelectric effect explanation on the basis of quantum theory now for the ejection minimum frequency is required called threshold frequency let us say light that fall has energy equal to h nu because according to planck's e is equal to h nu so light is allowed to fall on the metal surface and it is having energy h nu out of this energy h nu not is used as binding energy means this much energy is required to knock out the electron we can say it's a potential energy or it is just a work function so h nu not is utilized for the knocking out of the electrons and the rest of the energy is given to electrons that is h nu minus h nu not is given to electrons as a gift in the form of kinetic energy so here kinetic energy will be equal to h nu minus h nu not so following observations were made number 1 if frequency is greater than threshold frequency means if nu is greater than nu not definitely ejection will take place and the difference in energy is imparted to electron in the form of kinetic energy number 2 if nu is equal to nu not then only ejection takes place but kinetic energy will be zero number 3 the frequency nu is less than nu not no ejection of electrons will take place no kinetic energy is imparted so h nu not is also called wave function also called work function let us now talk about the black body radiation so explanation of black body radiation on the basis of planck's quantum theory so i told that a perfect absorber and a perfect emitter of radiations is the black body so black body means the uh, radiations which it will be absorbing it has to emit the same radiations that's why it is called the black body but how to explain this black body radiations by planck's quantum theory when light falls on the surface the particles gain energy they starts oscillating the more energy they will be supplied to these the more the energy more will be the energy of the oscillations so as the energy of oscillation increases amplitude increases so as the amplitude will increase the color keeps on changing so according to planck's quantum theory that is when e is directly proportional to nu so when a black body is heated it undergoes a change in energy so energy increases and so is the frequency of the striking radiation and we know that frequency of the radiation emitted will also change since there is a relation between frequency and color so change in color is noticed so from here we can conclude that some of the properties can be explained by the wave nature and other properties can be explained by the particle nature so from here we can conclude that the radiations possess dual behavior so all electromagnetic radiations possess dual behavior that is they possess both particle as well as wave like properties whenever radiations interact with matter it particle like properties is highlighted for example black body radiation and photoelectric effect wave like properties are exhibited when it propagates for example interference and diffraction let us now solve some numericals 
so let us solve the numericals the first is calculate the energy of a mole of photons of radiation whose frequency is 5 into 10 raised to power 14 hertz so here energy of one photon will be calculated which will be multiplied by a gedro number of particles so energy of one photon is h nu nu is given so multiply it with 6.626 10 raised to power minus 34 joule second and we will get the energy of one photon now we need to find out for one mole so multiply it by a gedro number to get the answer next is 100 watt bulb emits monochromatic light of wavelength 400 nanometer. Calculate the number of photons emitted per second by the bulb. So for that we have been given power. Power of the bulb is 100 watt. 100 watt means 100 joules per second. Then wavelength lambda is equal to 400 nanometer. Convert lambda into nu and multiply it by H to get the energy of one photon. So it is equals to H nu which is equal to H C upon lambda. So we will get the energy of one photon. Now we have to calculate the number of photons emitted. So it will be total energy upon energy of one photon. So total energy of the bulb is 100 watt that is 100 joules per second. So per second it is 100 joules. So total energy upon energy of 1 photon will give us number of photons emitted per second.